guys, this is the OK Gaming here, and today I'm back with another um, scripting tutorial. Now, although this really isn't going to be mostly about scripting, eh, I, I guess I could still call it that. But anyways, um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Also, I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, 40 subscribers. Yes, I know it sounds very, it sounds very little compared to other YouTubers, but hey, it's an accomplishment for me, so I'll celebrate it. But anyways, today we are going to be talking about meshes. So these are the special meshes and just the standard meshes. Which are, well, block meshes. I wouldn't actually call each one of them standard or different. I think they both have, you know, their, their own properties. But anyways, let's get into it. So the first one I'm going to be talking to you about is the block meshes. <clears throat> and you see, block meshes are different from other, from the other um, <clears throat> special mesh. Because whenever you use a mesh, the, the, uh, how do I say it? The mesh overrides the part. So let's say maybe this, um, this was a, yeah, this was just a block, <clears throat> what you see it as now. But let's say this mesh, um, was set to a cylinder. Then this block would turn into a cylinder. Um, but the size and everything will stay the same. I'll talk about I'll talk more about that later. But this time, the mesh right here is actually overriding the part itself. So let's so for me to explain it, I'll really have to get into these properties, so that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, so the first one is the name, you know, pretty simple. But then we have offset. Now this kind of well offsets it to whatever position you like. Just remember that the first number is the x-axis, you can see right over here. Then the second one is the y-axis, so this green one. And the third one is the z-axis, which is this blue one. So let's say I want to offset this block by three uh, on the y. That means I'm going to move it up by three blocks. And you can see that even though that this whole block is here, because I used the mesh and overrided it, that means that we can literally offset the whole block a few blocks higher. So I'm not sure in what way how this could help you in your game, but I could theorize a few ways. Anyways, next one is apparent, you know, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have scale. And then we have scale. You can probably guess what this one is, but it basically um, says how big the block is. Now, one is kind of the uh, normal kind of thing. So it's like um, the starting point. <clears throat> so if you wanted to make it bigger on all of the axes or axes, then we can maybe make it double its size, or in other words, two, two, and two. And you can see that it's actually double the size. See, it's locked down there. And the reason why this actually is, is because, once again, this block is the actual block that's kind of controlling it. But because we made it double the size, and, you know, it's already in here, then we, then it kind of looks like this. But of course, there is more to the bottom. All right, let's set it back. Of course, this actually works lower too. So if you go 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, you can see that the block is way smaller, even though this is the whole block itself. And finally, a vertex color. Now, you see, vertex color doesn't really do much, I guess, in this, in this uh, block mesh or in any block meshes, I'm assuming. This is just another way of showing color. So it's kind of like scale, but it's, but instead this is actually an RGB value. So you can think of the, you can think of this as RGB instead. 
So that's actually really all I have for block mesh. Let's move on to the special mesh. And this is where things actually get really interesting. Now you see in mesh, you can actually change the type of the mesh. You can do cylinder, you can do file mesh, you can do a head, your torso, wedge, you can do all of them. <clears throat> but the thing about the mesh is that you can see there's mesh ID and texture ID. Now this is where the toolbox comes in, or just your sorry, just your inventory. Now let's say I wanted to add in maybe a Pikachu. See, that is a pretty, oh my, what has happened to this face? Yeah, let's just not do that. But let's say we wanted to add in a Dominus, all right? You know, pretty big, but we'll fix that in a little bit. But you see, this Dominus right over here has, sorry, inside this Dominus, it has a mesh ID and a texture ID. Same thing for the special mesh. And this means that we can actually just copy this mesh ID, plop it in here. You can see that this is turned into a Dominus. But of course, there isn't, no co there isn't any color, which is where texture ID comes in. Oh, whoops. There we go. We can delete the main one. And now we have this huge Dominus we basically transferred over. I can't even find my part. But this is where we can use scale. You see, by making it, let's say, to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, you can see that we've literally shrunk it by like a billion. So, yeah, of course, the part is still inside here. So, you'd probably want to shrink it even more. And you can see that, you know, it's kind of, kind of there. You could shrink it a little bit more. There we go. Now you can see the part. So you can see that the um, once again the the mesh has basically overridden the part, and you can see that the dominus now takes over this part. And you can see that you know it's kind of a little bit off center of what I guess most people would want. So that's where offset comes in. Now I know this is on the z axis, so we'll add uh, some z value. And you can see, boom, we just moved it. There we go. So that's pretty much it for those four. Part, you don't really need to know. Scale, I just went over. Texture ID. Now this is where vertex color comes in. Once again, this is RGB, and it's kind of based off a one kind of value. So let's say I actually turn up the R value to 5, maybe. You can see that it's kind of, yeah, it's really red, you know, burning up, stuff like that. But let's say I wanted to turn up even more, all right? Let's go 15, 1, 1. You can see, you know, it turns even more red. Of course, you could go up to all the way to like 1,000, and it's like glowing red. And of course, you could also do this with the green and blue values see if i change the green value you see it's pretty much going green and you don't want it to glow that much green <clears throat> in that case maybe we go just two you know pretty nice and of course we can use blue same thing you can also combine them so you want to make purplish pink there you go of course you have to up the value but yeah but you kind of see where I am going here. And that's actually really all for meshes and block meshes. Once again, you could actually reference these from the script and set their value, you know, by using equals and stuff. I didn't really need to go in game because, well, yeah, I think this tutorial got everything down uh, without playing. But anyways, yeah, that's really all I have for you this video. I hope you enjoyed this. Once again, stay safe. COVID-19 still, you know, roaring crazy. So, you know, just stay careful. Oh, sorry, yeah, be careful, you know, sanitize, whatever. And, um, yeah, have fun scripting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!